Today we have the pleasure of speaking with Ken Roy Kerr, Interim CEO of Dollar Financial Services. We're going to hear his story. We're going to hear how he got to being Interim CEO of Dollar Financial Services. What, what's his background like? Where did he you know, grow up? What did, he in, what did he see himself doing before he started working at Dollar? And then we learn a little bit about the company, right? What's what's been happening over the last couple of months since we did their earnings call earlier this year. And then we'll talk about the future, right? What's to come? What can we look forward to? There have been some, some interesting announcements relating to Dollar Financial over the last few months. So we'll dig into those a little bit, try to get as much information as we can to, to help, you know, help you just to understand what's happening with the company. So it's gonna be a great interview as usual. And, you know, I can't wait to get started. All right, let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for the ability to produce well. Thank you for the ability to meet as a community. We pray, Lord, that this will just be a great discussion, one that is beneficial to those who will listen. And we pray for your many blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, everyone, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us live. Please be sure to share the video, uh, share it with your you know, different groups and communities so that we can have more persons joining for this conversation. You can start posting your questions for Ken Roy right now. We'll get to them as soon as we get to the Q&A section. And please join me in welcoming Ken Roy Kerr. Is it Kerr or Kerr, Ken Roy? <laughs> Kerr is good, right? Kerr, Kerr is good. <laughs> car is good. Ken Roy Car. Yes. My apologies. All right. Um, welcome. Sermina. Um, thanks for having me on this program. Um, it's really a pleasure to be here. Um, good evening to all your viewers. Um, if I should say before I start, Jeremy, that I actually have family who refer to themselves as Kerr. So ah. so definitely I understand when people are have an appreciation <laughs> when people say Kerr, yeah, but I prefer car. I do know somebody with the same spelling last name and it's pronounced Kerr for them. So Kerr, yeah. right. Right. all right. Um, cool. So thank you so much for accepting the invite. I know that it's an interesting time for you as a CEO or well, interim CEO. Um, so yeah, we're looking forward to this conversation. So let's start with learning a little bit about who you are. Tell us a little bit about your background. Um, so um, thanks for having me again. So my name is Kenroy Carr. Um, I come from what I'd say is very humble beginnings or humble background. I grew up in a very rural um, community called Townhead in Westmoreland um, in a single parent household. Um, in terms of education, I attended uh, Petersfield High School. Um, I have to say that I wasn't really bril a brilliant student throughout primary school and even in grades seven and eight of high school. Um, I think, thinking back, I'd perhaps even say that I was below average um, when it comes to um, just performance in class. But um, around grade nine, I think, I decided to kind of just change my mind, change my life, and kind of use education as a pathway to uh, brighter future. Um, thereafter, I became an A student and ultimately um, became even the head boy of Petersfield High School and uh, also excelled, I would say, in my CX examination. Um, from there, I started sixth form at Manning School. So yes, um, most times people hear that I'm from Westmoreland, they always say, oh, you went to Manning's. But my, my tenure at Manning's was very, very short. I actually started sixth form and uh, Three weeks later, I decided to make a shift to Montego Bay Community College, having um, received a scholarship to pursue a degree in business. Um, and going to Montego Bay Community College, I should note from now that this is actually where I met um, Kadeem Mears, our outgoing CEO. In year two of my degree program, I applied for and was awarded a scholarship um, from the Bank of Nova Scotia. And I think this scholarship pretty much opened the door for me to get a summer job at the bank. And in those days, my dream was always to become a bank manager. 
So having gotten a summer job, I was really determined to excel because I knew um, that I wanted to get a foot into the bank. Um, and yes, I was offered a position at the end of my six week summer job as a teller at the Savlamar branch um, in Westmoreland. And from there, um, I kind of moved through the bank, various roles from personal banking officer and handling, um, from personal banking officer teller to personal banking officer and ultimately handling um, or managing that partnership between Scotiabank and ATL um, for their Montego Bay office um, in the Western region. Um, I would say that I, um, throughout, after, 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 college, um, I'd say that I maintained a very close relationship with Kadeen. Um, we, we really maintained close friendship over the years and he has always been encouraging me to join Dollar. Um, he pretty much sold me the vision of what the company could be like, where he wanted to take the company. And I think his enthusiasm, his vision, they were quite compelling. So I took I took a leap and I left Scotia Bank and joined Dollar Financial. And today that vision has really turned into a reality. Um, after joining Dollar, maybe about a year and a half of joining Dollar, I actually decided to pursue a master's degree um, in business administration where I focus specifically on organizational development. And uh, um, that's it from there. I started I started out of, at Dollar as head of credit and risk, moved on to operations to become the chief operating officer. And of course, currently the substantive role is deputy CEO and uh, um, the interim CEO for Dollar Financial. So that's pretty much um, my background in a nutshell, Jeremy. <laughs> it's a, a very brief nutshell, but a lot of information there. It, it's interesting because when we spoke with David, he mentioned as well that Kadeen sold him on a vision for what um, Dollar Financial could be. So it's it's very interesting, you know, hearing those two stories and the vision that Kadeen <laughs> must have, you know, sold. Right, both. that's 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 correct. So it it's what what I'd like to know though is what made you so apart from buying into the vision, right? You'd have been with the company for a couple of years. What made you want to stay and to you know continue to progress through the different roles? Um, I think I think just going back to Kadeen's vision for the company, um, Jermaine, and it being so compelling, I think um, it kind of how he had shaped it. Then he outlined a really inspiring future where Dollar could kind of reshape the financial service industry and make real impact in people's life. Um, so for me, it wasn't joining Dollar Financial wasn't just the role, it was more about contributing to um, the potential of empowering people and uh, especially persons who are like me from humble beginnings who I know would be a part of those who are excluded from traditional banking services. So I really saw an opportunity to help and uh, um, I think that coming to Dollar Financial, that, that has been the culture and definitely would have been one of the main reasons why um, I am inspired to continue with Dollar Financial to stay with the company. Um, it's really, it's not just about a job for me, but it's really enabling uh, those who are um, what we would classify as the underbank or unbanked. Um, just enabling them to start a business, to purchase um, goods, to resell for their stalls, um, to help the hairdresser to open a salon, um, to help the taxi driver to actually become a taxi owner. And it's really about providing a chance for um, people to succeed and prosper. Um, that's pretty much what we have been doing and what we will continue to do at Dollar Financial. That sounds exactly like what Kadeen has said. So it, it sounds like you're definitely on, on the same page there. But I wanted to, um, I mean, Shelly actually had a question that I know we're going to get to eventually, but she's asking when does the interim end, right? Because before the announcement, you were actually made deputy CEO. So help persons to understand what, 
what's the status of your role currently at the well, well the substantive role is really that of a deputy ceo um and being the interim ceo of course interim ceo is until um one kadim is actually still the ceo or i should say the outgoing ceo so um thereafter the position will be available and i will be the interim ceo until that position is filled so in terms of i mean have you had discussions with the board with other stakeholders about what what the filling of that role would look like is it something where maybe they're planning to fill it internally with you being the front runner or is it something that they'll try to see who is maybe available or interested to take the position from outside the company do, do you know any of that at this point well well Jermaine, i would say that that is largely a board decision um and i'm sure that they're having discussion and that i wouldn't want to um preempt any anything where that is concerned so i'll just allow that one to um <laughs> when when the time is right i'm sure that that one will be announced right okay, but for now i i will um act in the position all right fair enough so tell us about the transition right because um um I, I'm assuming that you know they've had to be some form of adjustment. Sure, you are a deputy CEO, but there would have been some sort of transitionary period from maybe wrapping your mind around the scope of the duties that you would have had to that changing after you know the announcement was made by by Kadeen. So, what has that process been like? You know, how have you been relating to to the team members? How have you been relating to shareholders or you know? external parties what has that process been like for you um in terms of the transition i'd say that that has been uh, both exciting and uh, um somewhat challenging at the same time i mean stepping into the role it comes with it with its fair share of um responsibilities of course and it has really been a period of adjustment um for us um it's not a situation where nobody was prepared for this, of course, prior to, prior to the announcement of um, Prati Kadina announcing that he um, would be resigning. I mean, you'd have seen some steps being taken, such as the appointment of a deputy CEO, that being me. And I mean, Kadina has always been giving indication that um, we need to we need to step up because when he, when he leaves, of course, he, um, we're the ones who will really be running things um so yes it has been a period of adjustment but it has also provided an opportunity to kind of lead and to make a positive impact and uh, i should say Jermaine, that i am fortunate to have a talented and a dedicated team at dollar i'm talking about from from the board level from the leadership team the, the executive into the senior managers team and we have pretty much been working uh, closely to ensure that smooth transition and uh, um, together we're navigating change we're focusing on stability and we're trying to keep as best as possible our employees engaged and motivated to ensure that um, we can still um, I mean produce really excellent results so you're saying that essentially shareholders though they don't have anything to worry about, is what you're saying? Not. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> and, and, and I mean, I must say, in terms of in terms of a transition, um, just to just to add that, um, it's it's really sad to see Kadeen go as a CEO. However, Kadeen um, still has a role in Dollar Financial. I mean, he remains a director and a substantial shareholder in Dollar. So when it, when it comes to crafting strategies and, and relying on, on the board for guidance, that is still, um, he is one of those persons who will still be relying on. Relying on. So um, where that is concerned, I think, I think we definitely have a bright future ahead um, and a wealth of opportunity to tap into. Okay, okay. So um, in terms of, you know, helping persons to understand you a little bit better, uh, what would you say is the the unique perspective that you bring to the role, right? Because persons now, 
essentially until there is a further change, they would need to embrace you now as the CEO, essentially, right? Though, though, though deputy, it, you, you are the face of, of the company now, right? So what's, what's that perspective that you bring to the table? Um, and, and, and you're indeed correct, Jermaine. Um, I think, I think prior to, prior to us becoming a public um, company in 2000 and, uh, um, in 2020, 2022, we were, well, I would say that I would have pretty much been somebody who, <laughs> who worked behind the scenes. So make a lot of contributions, but definitely, um, just work quietly and work efficiently. Um, I think coming from, um, I think coming from a humble background and working my way up in the financial industry, um, I kind of understand and appreciate the importance of financial empowerment of individuals. Um, this kind of fuel my passion for creating opportunities and uh, making financial services more accessible to um, everyone, <laughs> being inclusive. Um, moreover, I think that my experience in various leadership roles of Dollar Financial Services has again given me a deeper understanding, a deep appreciation for our operations and of course the challenges and the opportunities that um, lies within our industry. And I think that this hands-on experience really allows me to approach leadership in a kind of practical way and definitely with a results-oriented um, mindset. And finally, I'd say that my... Um, commitment to fostering a culture of inclusivity and uh, employee engagement. Um, this kind of adds a layer to, to, to my perspective um, in terms of what I bring to the table. I believe that a motivated and a diverse workforce is, is really essential to achieving our goals and uh, sustaining our long-term success. All right. And I mean, the fact that you were, you know, going through those different roles in the company means you have, I guess, a, a more, I guess, in touch perspective as to what are some of the things that maybe you'd have wanted from leadership or wanted, you know, the CEO to, to um, consider, you know, have the ability to impact those things firsthand. So I guess it does be, it makes sense, right? That, that is correct. All right. So uh, do you feel like, I mean, again, I know it's very early to ask this question, but I mean, do you feel like it's it's something that you're you're prepared for, that you're ready for? Um, I think that having, again, having uh, the experience in leadership, um, just July 1st, I would have been appointed uh, to the role of deputy CEO, and that would have meant that at that time I would have to be prepared to um, ensure that business is in order if, 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 if the CEO were to go on a vacation um, or had to be otherwise engaged, we had to open another branch um, or open a subsidiary in another country that he could handle that. And um, of course, I as deputy CEO would have been able to continue to run operations. And that, at that time, I was very confident that I can step up to the plate, um, step up and, and, and have things running consistently. And uh, um, I still maintain that belief. Um, my, my experience, and again, um, the wealth of things that I've implemented at Dollar in terms of policy, um, strategies, um, I'm definitely up to the task. All right, good to hear. All right, so let's let's kind of double click on Dollar a little bit. Um, what would you say has been the key to success for Dollar Financial, right? Because you've been listed a little bit over a year, and you're 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 actually, I believe, one of the best performing junior market companies just in terms of profitability, and you know you certainly set the standard in terms of um, reporting, right? Because that record of of publishing your last financials after seven days. I, 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 I don't think anyone is, is going to beat that record for a while. 
So tell us what are the keys to success for, for Dollar Financial as you see it? Um, so I, I definitely can't touch on all of those, um, Jermaine, but if I were to highlight maybe the top three or four, I would say um, I definitely start with our customer-centric um, approach where we prioritize our customers' needs and uh, we, just, just try, we just try to be innovative in terms of um, satisfying these needs. So by tailoring our financial solutions, um, we, we kind of do that in a, in a way that we meet individual preferences. Um, and we, again, just en ensure that we emphasize excellent customer service and just build strong and lasting customer relationships. Um, the next key i would say is innovation where we try to stay at the forefront in terms of um just the way that we deliver our service and uh, um we've always we've always um been pushing to kind of invest in digital solutions and ensuring that our, our processes are streamlined in a way that um, will optimize um, operation and ensure that we're operating in the most efficient way. I think our, our suite of services, um, the, the, the diverse products that we offer is also one of the things that contributes to our success. Um, I think we offer a wide range of financial products that cater to broader customer needs and it, it, it definitely includes a product that um, everybody can still, um, again, inclusivity, everybody can still feel like they can come to dollar and uh, we will definitely have something um, something that can suit your need. I think the last one that I want to touch on definitely is, uh, um, well, there's one more that I definitely need to touch on, but in terms of employee empowerment, um at dollar i think we believe well at dollar we do believe that our employees are um our most valuable asset and investing in their development providing leadership training and uh, just fostering that high performance culture really ensures that um the team is committed to achieving the results and i mean once we have a committed and an engaged team we will definitely be able to deliver those results deliver those kpis which um, every single quarter the public is definitely looking forward to see. And uh, for us, I think corporate governance um, is very crucial. Um, adhering to, to um, the highest standards of transparency, um, ensuring that we're compliant and accountable. This is something that we believe that it maintains a certain level of trust um with our shareholders and that also includes trust with st other stakeholders like our customers employees investors and just regulatory body so i think those i'd say are some of the key um some of the key pillars are the key things that actually make dollar as successful as it is um, today all right so why do you think that <clears throat> sorry or how would you say dollar compares to its competitors? That's a good one, Jeremy. Um, so one of the things that we have always done, so so we so we so we right now our competitor who we who we believe to our, to be our competitors right now would be those that are regulated and list um, regulated by the Bank of Jamaica because those are actually the companies licensed in Jamaica to offer microfinance um, services and solutions. Um, we do peep over on our competitors to see what they have to offer, but I can tell you that we try to be different. We, 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 I think the way that we approach things, some of it are unorthodox in a sense where um, we focus more on building businesses, for example, and uh, which, which in turn or consequently will ensure building the economy. Um, so I think that that would be one of the key differences where I find that most of our competitors are kind of um, 
more into personal lending, some to the extent probably competing with some of the commercial banks and things like that, where our niche continues to be business loans. Um, our competitor might be booking eight or nine out of every 10 loans that they do is actually a personal or consumer loan, whereas Dollar Financial has quite the reverse. So eight out of nine of every loan that we do is actually a business loan. Um, we, we, the, our suite of products and services, as I, I, again, it captures um, everybody from micro businesses, a man standing at the corner shop selling soup, or um, the hairdresser that is um, braiding hair on her veranda. Those are our customers, um, straight to the customer who has a small or medium-sized entity. And uh, if, if, if we find that that strategy is really what separates us. Um, the fact that our portfolio is largely secured, a largely secured portfolio, and thus um, kind of allows us to have a buffer where any astronomical event, I think that we would be in a good place when it comes to our portfolio being really, really of sound quality. Um, yeah, that's 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 pretty much. <laughs> That's pretty much, um, and, 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 and one of the things too, Jermaine, is that Kadeen has always, <laughs> has always instilled in us to not focus too much on our competitors, but just focus on the things that we do well and continue to do um, those very well. Yeah, yeah, makes sense, makes sense. So, um, you know, speaking about competitors right there there would have been you know talks about acquisitions uh, previously um so i mean what would you say well what would you say the future looks like at least in in the in the short term about any inorganic growth opportunities for dollar um i think i think we have been having this discussion um for some time jermaine about <laughs> acquisitions, um, yes, I think in, <laughs> I think in, I think we we have um, there there are a lot of opportunities for acquiring another loan company. Um, I mean, we're in an environment where there is no regulatory body. Um, there before before. The, the Microcredit Act came in place um, based on estimates there are over 200 entities operating in the industry. Um, so I'm sure that we know about 11 ent entities being regulated. I'm sure that there are lots of opportunity for consolidation and acquisition in the industry for those who will more than likely um, have difficulty obtaining a license or those who just can't take the all of the, the, the process and everything that is required to get a license. So dollar has been and continue to look at opportunities that we that can allow us to grow inorganically, um, as you have said. And uh, um, that that's definitely something that we have always been exploring and we continue to explore. I think I think it's just about finding the right um, the right company or the right loan portfolio that really fits with our strategy and ensure that our KPI, some of our key performance in um, performance indices are still um, what we want them to be once we have done that acquisition. So I would I would answer that question to say that it's definitely something that we are still looking at. Um, but in terms of giving a definite answer as to whether we're looking at a particular company or looking or a timeline as to when this is expected, then that um is not something that i can commit to <laughs> no so that, I, I i figured as much but let me ask you this question then what would be an ideal acquisition target for dollar financial right so uh, so we're not talking about um anything being on the table no or anything like that but what would an mm -hmm. ideal acquisition target look like in in your opinion um, so, so, so of course, we, we would definitely be looking at something that, um, I mean, we're in the industry of lending and loans, um, so we'd definitely be looking at something that is um, 
we definitely be looking at a, a, a company that has a loan portfolio for sure. And uh, um, I think key for us is really the quality of the portfolio, Jermaine. Um, it doesn't make sense to be to be running to acquire a company or to, to acquire a loan portfolio. And at the end of the day, um, it is a portfolio that is that doesn't have um, enough quality loans, which will, uh, I mean, at the end of the day, you have to be putting more resources into collecting and uh, and just having uh, um, having that negative impact on your NPL, your ECL. So I'd say that that the ideal company would be one. I know that the industry has, based on our industry, the risk is high, especially if we are looking at portfolios where it um, is largely made up of unsecured loan, as is really the trend in the industry. But we're really looking for a company that has a uh, um, pretty solid loan portfolio in terms of quality. Interesting. All right. Interesting. Because what, what I'm thinking, I don't know if I'm right here, but you can let me know if I'm right or not. You mentioned your core business being essentially entrepreneurs, small businesses, up to maybe the medium. So then it would be then that, I guess the part that I'm filling in the blanks here, and you can tell me if I'm right, you'd be looking maybe for a company that's along that line maybe lending to small businesses entrepreneurs as well because if you go on the other end then you'll be dealing with clients that that you don't necessarily i'd say want to be dealing with is that is is that the way to think about it um i i, I think we were pretty much on the same page um i wouldn't say clients that we don't want to deal with but i don't want we don't want to have to to have a portfolio which results in too many issues that will impact um, our deliveries. That's that's pretty much it. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. All right. Cool. So um, let's kind of get some questions in from our audience. Um, so Aline is is just coming right out and asking: Is that company Access Financial? Um, I, I, it, it it doesn't sound that way to me. Um, Alain, based on what I think he's asking, if the ideal company that you've mentioned is Access Financial, um, Alain will not get me in trouble, so <laughs> I, I have no comment on that. <laughs> All right, um, Courtney is asking, is is Dollar better off with a different CEO? I'm not sure if he, if Courtney, can you give us some context as to that question? Are you saying different in terms of different from Kadeen or different? as in different from Ken or I, please specify. I think that would make sense. Aline is asking, will we see a change in Dollar's personality as you try to steer it in the direction that you think is best? And if so, what does the future look like? Um, well, I think I said initially, Jermaine, that the leadership team of Dollar um, largely remain the same. Um, the strategies that we have um, have not changed. Uh, I think that the most I can say that will happen is that we'll definitely be seeing us being more aggressive, um, definitely being more aggressive in terms of growth. Um, and uh, we'll just be seeing a little more innovation, a little bit more products um as we go along but the the aggression is definitely what we'll see because we are really pushing for that growth um for sure but the strategies have um the strategies in terms of the core of the business the customers that we're focusing on um we we have subsidiary subsidiaries like ultra which is um doing extremely well and we are pretty much just um going to be going at the market with a little bit more aggression um, as we pursue our growth strategy. All right. So it's, I, I guess what I'm, what I'm hearing you saying is like you're headed in the same direction. It's probably just maybe the tactical side that would be different because you are in fact a different person, right? So headed in the same right. direction, same customers, same overall. Same strategy. customers, more, what you'll be seeing is more partnerships, more strategic and partnerships and, and and just us doing more activities that will kind of push that growth that they um i mean i mean we're a listed company and everybody's looking for growth i'm sure that quarter yeah. after quarter 
the main aim will be for us to outdo, <laughs> outdo and just continue to grow. So that's pretty much um, what we'll be focusing on. Okay. Courtney's giving context saying, sorry, different from Kadeen uh, with, with the different leadership style I'm assuming Ken Roy will bring. So I, I think you kind of answered that question, really. Um, next, Jerome is asking, what are the positives you have already identified from the relationship with the new large state shareholders, that's SVL and Mayberry, and also have they brought any new plans or strategy that you will be implementing? What I can say about that partnership um, and 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 SVL and the Mayberry coming on board is that, of course, it's a strategic partner partnership. Um, Mayberry is an um, investment brokerage company. Um, SVL is a listed company on the stock exchange with a wealth of experience. Um, they do very well. Um, a lot of a very cash intensive business. So. Um, the, I'm, I'm sure and know for sure that the opportunities, there are opportunities from this partnership and, uh, um, those I'm guessing that we will provide more information on as we go along. All right. And the next question from Jerome is what's the latest on raising additional debt? Now, I believe this was alluded to on the earnings call. I don't remember the amount that was mentioned, either the earnings call or the AGM. I'm, I'm. I'm trying, I'm mixing them both up right now, but there was talk of additional debt. Um, there was a figure mentioned as well. Um, so I don't know if you can give us an update as to raising additional debt. Is that something that you're in the process of doing? Was it simply an, an evaluation? Uh, what's, what's the status of it? So we're, we're currently exploring all of those um, debt um, all, all of those strategies to raise additional capital for growing the business, of course. Um, we're in a, we operate a company that needs cash to grow. Um, cash is really our inventory. So in order for you to see the level of growth that you're expecting for the company, then we'll always be looking to raise debt. Um, that's that's just something that we're continuously reviewing, having, having um different approaching different um players in the market and 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 seeking the best terms i mean of course we can all see that interest rates and all of those stuff are really um rising so those are some of the things that we look at when we are making a decision for whether we're going to be taking on additional debt and who we will be um raising this debt with so um i would say that Maybe when we're on the earnings call, we'll have some more information to share. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that's not the next, the next part of the earnings call. <laughs> we usually get some, some good information on the earnings call, which by, by my calculation yes. should be happening within the next few weeks, I'll say. Months, a month or maybe a little maybe bit. Because I got, from a, got a record of seven days after the end of the quarter, the quarter ends in two weeks. <laughs> you, you can't Jeremy, do worse. You get me to commit to that record again? <laughs> you can't do it worse because the, the people, are going to say, people are going to say a new CEO is there. You have to beat the previous record. That's that's what they're going to say, right? They're going to want to see at least six days, right? Six, six and a half days, but it can't be seven, right? right. We'll see. <laughs> Uh, Kashmir is asking, can we look forward to additional expansion in countries outside of the region? Um, we continue to explore those opportunities. I mean, when we 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 are still awaiting um, basically an objection from the Bank of Jamaica as it relates to um, commencing operation in two Caribbean countries, namely. Um, St. Lucia and Barbados. Um, of course, with the regulation or us being a, us being a regulated um, industry, we have to seek authorization or seek at least an objection from, from BOJ once we are looking at markets like these. And I guess with, with the newness of all of this, I think sometimes it kind of holds up the process just a little bit. So we're still awaiting words on those, but 
um, outside of the expan uh, expansion regionally, not regionally, sorry, Jermaine, I would say that um, there are a wealth of untapped opportunity here locally that we're pursuing, and uh, we will just continue to be aggressive with those while we wait on um, at least an objection from the two other markets that we're looking at, that we're sure to, to basically, or we have decided to end up. Okay, do, do you have any ideas as to a timeline for a response? Um, if, if you had asked me that question uh, two months ago, I would have said that the timeline, at that, at that time, I would say the timeline would have been maybe another 30 days. Um, but 60 days later, um, I wouldn't want to say 30 days and, and then that doesn't happen. So, um, we yeah. really don't have any control. We have, I mean, it has been a, a, a little, a little bit of back and forth, um, and, uh, so far, based on our last submission, we'd have addressed everything that um, that was requested of us. So we're just waiting now on a final response. All right, great. Bianca is saying that you have intimate knowledge of the business and was on the ground working. So they think you're the best person to replace Kadeen as CEO. So that, that makes sense to me as well. Cash Wayne is asking, um, once the expansion is approved by the BOJ, how will it be funded? I, I think I think right now, um, Kaje, we're looking at we're looking at um, growing the company, and we definitely will be raising funds. Um, wherever we raise those funds, I'm sure that we will allocate um, to those markets accordingly. Once we have an approval, um, I mean, without an approval, then it's only prudent to just continue lending um, in our local Jamaican and Guyanese market markets. All right. And on that note, the question that follows is, are there any plans to list Dollar Guyana on the Guyana Stock Exchange or listing Ultra on the Jamaica Stock Exchange in the short to medium term? I would say maybe medium to long, long term because I don't think you're listing in the short term. So maybe medium to long term. Um, I'd say that there are a wealth of opportunities of being listed on the um the stock exchange, I think ultra, ultra for sure, being um, being listed will carry a lot of opportunities for that, a lot of opportunity for that brand. Um, but ultimately, that decision, um, I mean, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to preempt anything as it relates to us listing being listed. But I definitely think that it would be good for the business and that is something that um, would be looked at at the board level. All right. Alain seems to, to, to know what's happening. And Alain says a debt raise is more likely with MIL at this point, which is Mayberry Investments Limited, to power, um, two powerhouse in the top 10 now, SVL and Mayberry Investments Limited. So, I mean, I, I guess he... You know, figuring based on the partnership, then at some point, if you're raising funds, it will come from someone who has just joined you as a partner. But I, I guess time will tell, right? Time will uh, tell. Shelly Ann is asking, yeah, Shelly Ann is asking, what's the monthly growth for new clients? Um, in terms of new customers joining, um, I don't want you to quote me, Shelly Ann, but I know that since since the last since our agm which was in june we would have disclosed that our customer base would have grown from roughly five thousand in a, a year prior to seven thousand and uh, um since that time i think we'd have grown by at least another one thousand customers um so if you look at that from june to september three months that's about 300 and some customers um, per month um, I'd, I'd also want to add, though, that in terms of the growth in customers, we find, as you as you are pretty much aware, the the bulk of the loans that we do are business related, and you will find that um, in terms of the, the actual number, so some persons might be looking for twenty, thirty thousand customers, um, but because of the focus a lot on business loans, you find that we, while the, the numbers are lower, you still get more value 
from doing these loans. Yeah, man, and, and they're likely to be repeat clients as well as you finance them from small to their business growing. So as their business grows, the amount of money they'll borrow will grow as well. Yeah. And 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 Shelly and will quote you. I'll I'll just, I'll just tell you that one. <laughs> Shelly and will <laughs> definitely keep track of what you're saying, which is a good thing, right? So Shelly and will hold you accountable to what you say. Um, I think she's asking another part of that question: What percentage of clients have multiple loans, right? Um, so. Um, well, the, the model that we have, our based on policy, um, we, we tend to try to have um, one customer having just one loan. So you, you wouldn't really find a lot of cases where one customer has two or three accounts unless they have their really established customers who we actually see the value in giving more than one or two loans. Um, the loans are short term, so you find that a customer will will take a loan um, three, six months later, that loan is repaid and they take another loan. But you, you, you rarely find them running concurrently. Okay. All right, I see Jerome saying that we're not answering, we're, we're not asking his questions, Jerome. I don't know if you stepped away, but we have been asking your questions. I have them bookmarked. So if somebody asks a similar question, then I won't ask that one, but we've answered at least two of your questions already. So please just check it out because um, we did answer them, all right? Let me see here. Um, there is a question from Jerome, actually, that's not answered yet. And what is the size of Ultra's loan book now? Um, up to the last quarterly result, um, Ultra's loan book was a little over 500, I think about 560 million. Um, I would... Uh, I, I know that it has grown since. And we're likely to get, so similar to how we got the last earnings call update, we'll probably get an ultra update as well on the- Right, and, and that, that, that will keep consistent going forward where we have the, um, the country manager for Guyana, the CEO for ultra, um, our marketing manager and other, other managers just introducing them to the team and talking on what they are doing to add value um, and how they're adding value to the company. All right, great. All right, so I think we kind of answer this one again, but Christopher Young is asking if you can tell us about the demand for loans that you are currently experiencing. Um, I think we're in a business where um, I, don't, I don't know if I ever see a time when we're not booming in terms of loan demand. Um, currently, we have, um, currently, and I think even maybe um, consistently, I would say, we have had a high loan demand, higher than what we, we can ever um, um, disburse. So what we kind of find ourselves having to do is um, if we have $750 million in, 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 in loan demand and we only have 250 to list to, to lend, then it, it puts us in a position where we have to basically cherry pick and, and find those that are um, those that are most um likely to re to be repaid and i think that that is good for the company because it means that the quality of our loan book will continue to to um, be way better than what the industry average is all right great um so aline is asking is there any fear that you'll not be not be able to fill the shoes of your predecessor interesting question <laughs> aline um let me answer that question by saying that wherever, um, whatever shoes I wear in Dollar Financial um, or at Dollar Financial, it, you will see me doing my very best. Um, so, I mean, as I would have said at the initial stage, um, I am the deputy CEO. That's my substantive role. And if we were to get a new CEO, then uh, as a deputy CEO, I'm sure that I would still... Uh, um, be able to add a lot of value to the company. And as I've always done, I would still do my very best to ensure that um, we drive results and, and achieve our objectives. All right. And I mean, at least from what I've seen from you, Kenry, just from the time that we've been interacting, you're very much about the team, right? So even if you're not the one running... Right about the team, Jermaine, but... and, uh, and, and I mean, I, I, have to, I have to just take some time out to note 
that the support system has been very strong. I mean, from the board level, from the outgoing CEO, Kadeen, from the leadership team, everybody on this call will be familiar with like a Trevine and a David um, Tashoni in marketing. Um, but some of those persons that we don't know, Kalila Thompson, who is operations manager, and Lenia Williams, um, who is the credit manager, and Trisha Nicholas, the compliance and governance. I mean, the support team is just really strong, and I am really grateful to have a team that, I mean, just, I'm inspired every day. If, if I come to work and, and, and I feel like there's just something wrong that they know that, um, I mean, within a, within a very short time frame, I'll be able to get back up and, and do what I need to get um what I need to get done. Yep, yep. All right, so so Kashwain is saying much appreciation to you, Mr. Carr. You seem like someone that will be able to continue and build upon what Dollar has been doing so far. And he has no doubt of how impactful you will be. And uh Courtney is saying that they're impressed uh thus far. It's safe to say that Kadeen was the face of Dollar, but you were the driving force behind the success of the company. And I hope you remain CEO of the company. Very well informed. And Shelly Ann is asking, I think, from the question that we answered previously, is it the same for Ultra where clients are likely to take multiple loans? I guess because Ultra loans are more considered like personal loans, right? Not necessarily business loans, or those are still business loans as well. All right, before I answer this question, um, Jermaine, just to go back to the previous question that um, all of us at Dollar are really driving force. Um, I mean, it's it's our operation has never been a one-man show where um, one person is the face and the others are driving. Um, we really don't have anybody at Dollar who is just a face. We are all drivers um, of, of, of the results that you're seeing. Just, just to lay that one and make it clear. Um, the the other question I, I got distracted, so you'll have to go, you'll have to read that one again, um, Jermaine. Okay. So the so so the question is: Is it the same for Ultra, where the clients are likely to take multiple loans, or I was saying that it seems like Ultra is more personal loans and not necessarily business loans, but I'm not sure if I if 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 I was correct in saying that. So that's Ultra. Ultra, um, like Dollar Financial, they focus a lot on um, business loans, and definitely Ultra Ultra portfolio is 100% secure because it's an asset -based, it's an asset based lender. Um, the major difference with Ultra is that um, they we're we're really in two different segments where um, they lend to high net worth customers, and Ultra lends to high, high net worth customers. Um, but the, the focus is still largely on business customers. Um, the value of those loans tend to be much larger than what is um, disbursed at Dollar Financial. And as such, we wouldn't necessarily see one customer having more than one account, um, similar to, the, to a, dollar, a dollar customer. Would you say that you think that the loans from Ultra may surpass Dollar Score loans maybe in a year or two? Um, that's our projection based on the value and, and the demand for for serve for that service. Okay. Um, we right. we I, I I wouldn't want to say that it will definitely surpass, but I'm sure that we will be seeing Ultra's contribution to the group's performance being much more significant um, as time progresses. Okay. And Shellyan says yes, she will quote you. So just to clear that. Um, just in case there were there was any doubt, Elaine is saying if there were any doubts about your ability to function in the role of CEO, it's safe to say that all doubts have vanished. So congratulations and keep it up. And Jerome Elaine. is is saying thanks thanks much for I guess the questions that we have answered, but he it seems to have been unclear about the the new plans or potential strategy being implemented since the new shareholders have come on board. That was a question we we're asking about are we likely to see a new strategy or new direction with with the with the um with the acquisition of of top 10 ownership by mil and and svl right i believe we answered that question but just in case right. you missed it anyway. no i mean i mean as i said before um i'm sure that we'll be seeing some value where from from those partnerships it's still early days and i'm sure that as we go along we'll get some more 
insight and more information being shared with the public as to um, how we are benefiting from those partnerships. Okay. All right. And Cash is saying from the last earnings call, there was a projection for the loan book to be grown to three billion by end of year. Is Dollar still on track to achieve this goal? I'm not sure if that was the last earning call or the AGM, but that's correct. Yeah. Well, one that's that's okay. that's still that's still that's still definitely um within our eyesight. All right. And uh, Courtney's asking, what is the support like from the dollar staff directors with the current climate? Um, I would have touched on that earlier, Courtney. That um, I mean the that that is one of the um, the key drivers, the key inspiration for me on a daily basis. Just the fact that I have a team that I can rely on, um, and this is from the board level. Um, from the ongoing CEO, my leadership team, and just every single staff that work at Dollar Financial. So the support has been tremendous. All right. And let me see. Just two more questions, it seems. Um, Shellyan is asking, what about the Fosterich agreement? Is our Fosterich clients qualifying for dollar loans? I believe Kadina commented on this during the last earnings call. Um, so how has, how has it been since, I guess is, is the question she's asking. So are you seeing take up from that partnership that you have with Fosterich? We, we do have, we do have, um, we do have applications coming in. Um, we do have one and two that are successful. Um, but the screening, the screening is, uh, um, this from the screening process, you'll find that if four persons or five persons apply, maybe one might be successful with an approval. But we still have applications coming in um, from that partnership. Okay. So is it something that you're saying maybe at this point is maybe not moving the needle, but it's something that is in progress that may take some time that, to that, that is correct. That That is correct. All right. So Paper Plate is saying stock being down over 17% year to date. Are you worried? And do you believe the stock is fairly priced at its current, um, as at, I, I, I guess, end of trading today? My perspective on this, Jermaine, is that the focus, the, the focus is ultimately on the, on, the, on the value that we bring to our investors and shareholders. And of course, that is reflected in the stock price. But I think, um, and I think generally, the stock market has seen um, some significant levels of decline um, since over the last couple of months or several months. But for me, I think the focus will be or continues to be on driving the performance um, of the company, which I am sure will ultimately have an impact on the price of the stock. I mean, the stock price is not something that we can influence so what we have control over is how we perform and and we believe that once we deliver on results it will ultimately bring value through an increase in the stock price and that's what we're focusing on all right fair enough i, I was just gonna say you have absolutely no control over the share price and right and if you just keep performing then it, it will eventually be where well closer to where it should be um so two more questions here. I think we're going to close it. Any questions that come in after these current two, we're going to ask you to post it in the comments. Uh, so the question is from Courtney asking, will Dollar be expanding further in Jamaica? Um, we, we definitely have intention to um, open a location in Clarendon. I think we have actually um, identified the actual space already, but again, um these these to, to open an, an a location which is something that usually takes us maybe a few weeks um if we have to build out the branch maybe that might take uh, about six six weeks to eight weeks but um this again requires the nod of the boj and we uh we have made our submission and are waiting um their feedback but but we are in fact exploring um 
um, opportunities. I mean, when we look at some places that we don't have operation, we where we don't have a physical office, um, we do see some amount of demand coming. So we constantly just look and see where opportunities are for us to grow, for us to put like a presence, just, just be present where persons have an office that they can visit or somebody that they can deal with personally. Um, so we so we'll we continue to look at that. But I mean, at the moment, I'd say our 10 branches um, that we have, um, we really have been fulfilling needs um, from all 14 parishes in Jamaica. Okay. Uh, Courtney is saying, are you, uh, what it was like regarding the resignation of Kadeen and how was the reception from the staff? I, I think you kind of alluded that alluded to that already that there was some sort of internal preparation taking place before what about the public side right because i think that i mean just kind of going back to i guess the moments after it happened i think there was definitely concern um so i mean what what were i'd probably reframe that question to ask you what was maybe the initial reaction like and 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 what have you seen since um from a from a from a staff level um i'd say that initially when 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 he would have indicated to us as a team um it for us it's really sad to see Kadingo, but i mean as i said he would have we would have seen preparations in place and this is something that would have been on the table i mean from the public side i can't speak too much on that germane but i do know that um i think kadeen would have addressed um most of the issues or sentiments or concerns in the public domain and i think having done that um people it would appear that there is some amount of um relief and um acceptance as to how things really are okay and the final, 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 final question. Well, final two questions. People keep sneaking them under, right? Final two uh, questions. Clarity. <laughs> <laughs> OJ needs to approve each new branch. Is that um, how it is? If so, what's the point of having a license? Right. So I'm. I'm not sure what will change because I'm sure that um, sometimes. I guess sometimes when things are new um we we we, we kind of when we have holds up like hold up like these then we find that um they i'm sure that they'll just implement some more efficient way of getting things done but at the moment once we're opening a new branch or subsidiary it requires the the, the at least a no objection from the boj okay and the final question <laughs> Final question from the community, because I do have two questions I wanted to ask you personally before we close out. Um, so from the last earnings call, the non-performing loans and the expected credit losses had increased. Are you able to say if those have started going back down as yet? And if yes, what's the range that they're in right now? What I can say about these is that they have remained in a tolerable, tolerable um, or remained at tolerable levels levels so um this is is really not a concern for us we have uh, i mean we do expect that from time to time you might see some fluctuation especially in the npl the ecl tends to be a little bit more stable because of the fact that we have such a high ratio of secured loans but in terms of npl um you will see some fluctuations here and there but at the same time it's still within a level that we believe is manageable and will still remain um, way, way below the industry average. So I don't think we have, uh, um, I think from the last earning calls, we, the last earning call, we would have seen NPL at about 9.7%. Um, it, it definitely has not gotten any higher than that. All right, cool. So I believe that's it for the community questions. I want to thank you guys so much for posing those questions. And I hope you're happy with the response. I don't think we've seen Ken or I try to shy away from any answers, which I, I can truly appreciate. 
Uh, I do have three closing questions for you though. Same question that I would typically ask CEOs before we close out. So what's your personal investment strategy? So I don't know if you invest in the stock market currently, but if not, that's fine. Just tell us what your personal investment strategy is. Um, I, 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 for me, important thing is diversification. And yes, I invest. Um, I mean, I am the interim CEO of a publicly traded company. <laughs> so obviously I invest in the stock market, but I mean, outside of dollar, then I, I do look for other, um, um, other opportunities. I mean, at this point in time, when, especially when the, um, prices for most stocks are going down, I kind of see when I, where I can and can afford some of these opportunities to just buy shares here, try to diversify portfolio just a little bit and ensure that um, I, when prices are low, you buy and just wait to wait to get the returns when, when, they, when they come back up. So, so for me, I would say the most important thing is diversification. So, so tell us a little bit of what types of companies are in your portfolio. So don't tell us the names, but maybe industries and do you also invest outside of the stock market? Um, in terms of, in terms of, in the, in terms of industries, of course, um, have a little investment in banking in banking and finance, um, in terms of commercial banking space, um, I'd say education, education, um, sector and some stocks in a medical company. <laughs> I don't know if that's giving too much. Very Jeremy. <laughs> no, that, that's, that's very interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting. I'm definitely, I'm definitely going to be, be, be asking you privately to fill in those blanks. Um, what about outside the stock market though? Um, outside of the stock market, I mean, the, the, the principle for me is that um i in terms of for example i mean i seize all opportunities to just build wealth and to ensure that um i mean i can be secure in the future my children can be secured in the future um my family in general is secured so i mean if i just to share personally that i was paying rent for example a few years ago and i decided that um why pay rent when you could probably pay the same or a little bit more and own somewhere for yourself that the value can appreciate. Um, and I mean, that's just an asset that you're holding on to right there. Um, when you look at like pension, I personally seize the opportunity to contribute as much as I can to like a pension fund. Um, of course, that comes with its own level of benefits when it comes to um, tax-free, the, the, the amount of tax that you pay, but then the amount of reward that you get at retirement. Um, and just about having an investment where you can make small, consistent contribution that will um, contributions that will build over time. So those are pretty much some of the smaller things that I focus on outside of um, in terms of an investment strategy. <clears throat> nice, good stuff. All right. So, what books are you reading? Or if you're if if you're not a reader, what podcasts are you listening to? Um. Not to to be quite truthful, Jermaine and Frank, <laughs> I, am, I do read um, I do read books. Um, I think it was it's something that I used to do a little more um, in my younger days. Um, and I don't know if it's being busy, but um, recently I started. Uh, um, recently, I started reading this book. It's called The Eighty Twenty Principle. Right, and it's really it kind of delves into the um, the Pareto principle, kind of emphasizing the influence that a mere twenty percent of your effort can can have in terms of generating eighty percent of your results. I mean, this is something that it's something that we hear all the time, but um, I've really been just looking at that book just to pinpoint that crucial twenty percent um and dedicating and trying to see if i can dedicate my full focus to proving um <laughs> to proving that to be a somewhat invaluable lesson all right great and the absolute final question i promise you 
Uh, what's the most fulfilling part of being interim CEO at Dollar Financial? Um, <laughs> good question. I'd say that for me, it's really the opportunity to make a positive impact on a larger scale. Um, it's about driving the company's vision, its strategy, um, empowering employees, and just de delivering value to customers and shareholders. Um, I think I've witnessed the growth and success of um, Dollar and the development that we have seen um, that it has bring to people and the immense satisfaction that um, people actually get from, from whether they're investing in Dollar or they're, just a, or they're actually a customer in Dollar Financial. Um, so just witnessing that growth and that success, I think it is um, definitely something that I would say is very fulfilling. And uh, just the ability to contribute to the community and to create opportunities for others is really gratifying for me. Great. Thank you so much, Kenroy. Uh, I, I, I believe this was a, a very enlightening conversation we definitely have a better understanding of who you are as a person as a ceo your management style the fact that you know team is very important to you and you've you've taken the time to always mention your team first and the you know the fact that it's, it's not just you that are you know driving things so I definitely appreciate that and i think we know dollar a little bit more i would we <laughs> certainly look forward to the earnings call coming in a couple of weeks and the further updates in terms of what's happening because there are still some unanswered questions or at least questions that investors are waiting to see right so persons are waiting to see the development right. of, of how mayberry will be involved of how svl will be involved we're waiting to see what further expansion will look like we're waiting to see what 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 uh what sort of profits a three billion dollar loan book will bring? So all of these questions we're waiting to see our our storylines play out for the remainder mm -hmm. of the year. But we thank you so much for the the um you know sharing that information with us so that we can you know put things together a little bit more. So really appreciate it. All right, thanks, Jermaine. Thank you for the questions. <laughs> Thank you for the questions and thanks to your viewers too who i mean um i i i have i'm committed to that level of transparency and being just about as transparent as possible without sometimes um giving information that is <laughs> not to be given so um thanks for the question and it, it's really a pleasure has been a pleasure um doing this interview all right thank you so much all right, everyone, thank you for being here. If you stayed for the whole interview, I'm hoping that you would have found it valuable enough to leave us a like, uh, share this interview with someone who may be a dollar shareholder, maybe somebody who you've heard talk about the company who may be interested in hearing what Kenroy had to say. So we have some more interviews lined up for the rest of this month. So we won't share them yet, but we'll ask you to subscribe. Subscribe to our newsletter as well. That's where we'll post the interviews that are coming up. We do have our conference that's coming out later on this year. We just put out the save the date. So that's coming December 1st and 2nd later this year. So stay tuned for that. Um, last year was an amazing conference. So right now we're actually um, trying to you know finalize our sponsorships, finalize our speakers. Um, so we take your recommendations and feedback. Tell us anyone you'd like to here at the conference, etc. But um, yeah, we have a lot more content coming your way soon. So really do appreciate you being here. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the very next video. Learning is the key to successful investing. And who doesn't want to invest in some way? Here at Learn Grow Invest, we focus on financial education, all with the aim of sharing our knowledge on personal finance, investing and building wealth. We do this on the foundation of our faith in God. If a more holistic approach is what you need, check out our Grow Faith-Based Financial Coaching Program. Find out more about us at LearnGrowInvestClub.com and follow us on all social media platforms at Learn.